Hello, my name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals, illustrators, designers, people who spell potato with the letter E, and today I'm reviewing Sidecar, the new feature in Mac OS Catalina that turns your iPad into a second screen for your Mac. As a second screen, Sidecar is great, but if you're hoping to replace your drawing tablet, it's a mixed bag. Today's video is brought to you by Intego. Intego has been keeping Mac safe since 1997, and it's no surprise that they're the leader in Mac security. Intego's premium bundle X9 has five powerful tools to keep your Mac safe, secure, and protected from internet threats. It includes Virus Barrier, which is the world's number one best Mac antivirus, which blocks all varieties of adware, spyware, and malware from infecting your Mac. This summer alone, Intego discovered and was the first to protect against several new threats, including Crescent core, which spreads through Google search results. It also includes Net Barrier, a two-way firewall that not only prevents incoming attacks on your network, it also can alert you when apps on your Mac try to phone home and potentially violate your privacy. And Personal Backup to protect your data, Content Barrier to protect your family, and Mac Washing Machine to maintain free disk space and organize your Mac. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link down below in the description where you can get 50% off your Mac Premium Bundle. To run Sidecar, you're going to need a newer Mac and a newer iPad. I'll link to the specific requirements down below in the description. Unfortunately for me, my old trusty 2015 MacBook Pro just wasn't going to cut it. This means I had to steal my wife's laptop. You're going to need to be running Catalina on your Mac and also have the latest iPad OS 13 running on your iPad. If you do, you can just turn on Sidecar by clicking the AirPlay icon in the menu bar up top. It works over Wi-Fi or plugged into your laptop. One thing you might need to do first is to tell your iPad to trust your computer before this is going to work over Wi-Fi. So the first time you set it up, you might have to plug your iPad directly in. As a second screen, Sidecar is impressive. I've used Duet Display, I've used AstroPad, so I expect some lag, some artifacting. Even if it's tiny, I expect some kind of tell that would say, hey, I'm not really a monitor, I'm just pretending to be a monitor. But the clarity and performance here is insane. This is not an emulator running a second monitor, this is a second monitor. Watching videos, moving things around on the screen, it's all super crisp. I also thought being connected via the USB-C slash Thunderbolt wire would give me better performance, but honestly, Wi-Fi is just as good. When people talk about the benefits of Apple controlling the software and the hardware, this is the kind of thing they're talking about. Like any secondary monitor attached to your Mac, you can move any application to the other window just by dragging it over. You can also dive into the settings and place your iPad on whatever side of your laptop you wish or even make your iPad your primary screen. Catalina also bakes in some extra tools. By hovering over that little green expando circle in the corner, you can send your app over to the other display automatically. By default, the screen has some black bars along the top and along the side. Inside those black bars are a bunch of useful shortcuts. This one moves your dock over to this iPad screen. The command, option, control, and shift software keys can be used in the interface. Makes it a little easier to use with the Apple Pencil sans keyboard. This bad boy is an undo button. This one pulls up a little software keyboard right there on the screen. And this one disconnects sidecar. Along the bottom is a context-sensitive touch bar. It's the same kind of thing that's built into the newer MacBook Pros, but not my wife's newer MacBook Pro. Have you seen my laptop? No. Touch is not as intuitive as I thought it would be. Coming from the iPad or even Windows, I thought I would be able to use my finger to scroll or tap or navigate the interface. And on Sidecar, you just can't. I can tap on this button to open the dock, but then I can't tap on the dock itself to open any apps in it. It's weird. There are some hand gestures. Three fingers swipe to undo. There is pinch and zoom. That sometimes works. There's a two finger scroll, but these all feel wrong. They aren't smooth. If you're used to the Apple trackpad, it has elastic scrolling. It feels great. It's got weight and momentum. Here, if you're scrolling with two fingers, it's very mechanical. The second that your fingers lift from the screen, it just stops. It all feels very unApple. Same with using the Apple Pencil as your input. I thought I could use it like a mouse, but I 
only kind of can. As soon as the tip of the Apple Pencil hits the screen, it acts like a mouse button being held down. The Apple Pencil doesn't have a default hover state like, say, a Wacom stylus does. The only state it has is clicked, so once it hits the screen, it's on. If you really want to use it, you have to have one hand on the Apple Pencil and the other hand on the trackpad, and at the end of the day, you might as well just click with the trackpad. what I look for in a great drawing tool. As my example, I'm going to be showing you with the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro. First, I want to see if it can hold pressure well. I press lightly and very little paint comes out, and as I press harder, I want more paint to come out. And I want to know, is that pressure curve smooth? Does it feel like it's coming on too strong or blowing out at a certain point? You want smooth, consistent pressure. You want to feel like you're in control of it. Drawing circles with different pressure applied helps me really see see this. Often your hand will add a little more pressure as you go along the bottom of a curve or something like that. So if it's not consistent, you're, you're going to notice that sort of thing. I also take a look at fast hatching lines. I try to keep them consistent. How do they taper? Some of that depends on the brush you're using. Some of it depends on the amount of pressure you apply, but I'm looking for uniformity when I'm drawing with the same brush. No strange bloops along the bottom and no weird mechanical looking tapers along the top. Lastly, and for me this is most importantly, is can it draw a straight line? I draw slow angled lines to see if there's any uniform wave occurring. So with that as our baseline, let's take a look at how the Apple Pencil performs in Sidecar. I really did not enjoy using the Apple Pencil on this program. It seems to me what's happening here is that it's taking too long for the information that's, that the Apple Pencil is putting out to actually reach the Mac to register a mark. And so what we see is instead of smooth pressure lines, the pressure kicks in too hard. It kicks in a fraction of a second too late. We see this a lot with fast hatch lines that end up looking very mechanical. We don't get smooth tapers. Instead, it's trying to fill in the blanks by kicking in the pressure too hard and too fast. I'm taking a look at three apps here. I'm gonna be looking at Photoshop, I'm gonna be looking at Affinity Designer, and I'm gonna be looking at Krita. I noticed the problems occurring in all three of the apps, but in different shapes and sizes. First app I'm taking a look at is Photoshop. I think this one performs the best as far as the pressure goes. It seems to be the smoothest out of the three that I'm gonna be looking at. There are some quirks and we're starting to see those quirks right away uh, at the end of my line. In fact, most of my lines, I get a little dot down here. It's looking very mechanical. Overall, the pressure information just isn't getting from the pencil to the pen very quickly. I'm gonna do some quick hatch lines here, and what I really look for is consistency, and I'm just not getting that consistency. It's not too bad. What's happening is there's parts where, whoa, scrolling is also really wonk on Photoshop. I need the hand tool for a second here. One thing you see at the bottom is every time I lay down a line, I'll draw an arrow to it, you see these little circles at the bottom of the line, which tells me that it doesn't know that I'm pressing lightly at the beginning and applying more pressure through. We're also seeing these inconsistent tapers hap happening on the lines, and that's all telling me that the pressure information that the Apple Pencil is usually super good at doesn't work particularly well here. Next up, I want to jump over to Krita, and I wanna play with this a little bit. My ink pen here is when I press really lightly, I get a really small line. Now keep in mind, this is a 343 pixel brush. Uh, so as I apply more pressure, it really gets big and it feels super inconsistent to me. You see that inconsistency here. You see that inconsistency here as I start to apply more pressure. Again, we see a little bit of the dots at the beginning of the line. I think the initial activation rate could be a lot better. If I'm using a thinner pen, that doesn't show up at all. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna shrink this down a little bit and we're gonna try some uh, fast hatch lines here like we did in Photoshop, just to get these here. We're seeing a lot of the same stuff we saw in Photoshop. Um, same thing with the mechanical thing. It just doesn't know how I'm applying that pressure, so it's trying to make it up, or it's kicking it a little too late and a little too early, so it's very hard to get organic lines. So let's jump over to Affinity Designer, and I, I'm gonna show you basically the same thing. Affinity Designer brushes are a little bit different, but they perform pretty much the same way. Here, I have a 178 pixel brush, so I should see something when I start drawing, even lightly, and I have to apply a fair amount of pressure before I get anything on these brushes. I don't know if you can even see those lines on the camera. I'll press a little bit harder, and now this is pretty heavy pressure, and now I apply more and more and more 
Now I get a pretty big brush. It takes so much pressure just to even get a line in this app. Let me do my uh, quick, fast hatch lines. I'm applying a lot of pressure on this 178 pixel brush and it's just not even coming through. Unfortunately, you should probably stick to the iPad app because it's wonderful. This just isn't doing it. This is an 800 pixel brush. As I draw really lightly, I'm getting a very, very light line. As I apply more pressure, it's really blowing out in places. Now let's try those fat hatch lines again. Again, this is an 800 pixel brush here, um, and I really have to apply a fair amount of pressure to get anything out of it. And we're saying pretty much the same mechanical things across the board in all of these apps. The Apple Pencil just is not sending all the pressure information as quickly as it needs to to the Mac. So that's the test. I do want to say that I have tried this on two different iPads, the iPad Pro from 2018 and also this. This is the brand new uh, $329 7th generation iPad. I've tried them plugged in and I've tried it over Wi-Fi and I get similar results, pretty much the same results across both. Well, it's free, so... Yeah. I've recorded this ending several times because Sidecar isn't horrible. I've seen on other social media that other artists are out there already enjoying it, and the consensus so far has been pretty positive. If you already have an iPad, if you already have a Mac, and you're capable of upgrading to Catalina, go ahead, see if it works for you. I wanted to nitpick this because I think it can be better, and I think it should be better. Maybe I should have jumped in when it was in beta and reported it directly to Apple, but I'm a reviewer, and I wanted to point out the shortcomings in the software, because if you don't, they're never gonna get fixed. And in general, most tech reviewers aren't drawing all day. They're not gonna spot these things. They're not looking for these things. The good news here is I feel like everything that I've talked about up to this point is totally fixable. This is iteration one. I will say I'm used to seeing things a little bit more polished when it comes from Apple. And I think they've nailed the hardest part. The hardest part is probably getting that latency down. They've done a really good job with that. Most people are gonna use this as a second screen. They're not gonna be drawing on it. Our priorities as illustrators, artists, designers, we're way down on that list. Just for reference, I did bust open AstroPad, which is a similar app. It's been in the App Store for several years. They've been working on it. They've gotten their latency way, way down, and it's actually a really good tool that does something very similar. I know that this can be done with the software. This isn't a limitation of the Apple Pencil or the iPad or anything. I thought this might be the first step Apple took into accommodating touchscreen laptops sometime in the future. This would be a great opportunity for them to fiddle with a touch interface with Mac OS without like diving in head first. It takes a lot more work to refine a UI to work with touch than I think a lot of people probably think it does. I mean, look back, I was an early user of Windows 8 with some of those early Surface products. That was a rough road uh, that Windows took to get to the point where it's at now. And so I thought Sidecar might be the spear point to that initiative that would point Apple in that direction. But looking at how they've implemented it, they've steered way clear of turning Mac OS into a touch base interface or doing anything to even encourage the user to use it that way. So what are your thoughts? What do you think about Sidecar? Are you going to test it out? Are you looking forward to it? How are you going to use it? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching the video. Totally appreciate it. And I'll see you in a couple of days.